Hi, this is Greg Kilstrom. Welcome to season three of the Agile World, where we discuss customer and employee experience, organizational and workforce transformation, and how business can adapt and continually improve in an Agile age. The Agile World podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to techsystems.com. To read more about the topics discussed in this show, you can go to my website at theagile.world and read my latest articles or get a copy of my latest book, The Agile Workforce, now available on Amazon and other retailers. Hi, my name is Greg Kilstrom, and I'm the host of the Agile World podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of planning for meaningful customer experience measurement across multiple platforms and systems where strategic planning and connections between data sources are crucial. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Dushant Mitra, Director of Professional Services and Partner Experience uh, and Practice Success at Medallia. Uh, Dushant, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks, Greg. It's great to be here. Let's uh, start with a little background on on you and what you do. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about Medallia and what you do there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Medallia is an experience management solution. We we operate in the customer and employee experience management space, but also in the product experience and uh, you know the citizen experience world. Um, we essentially capture sentiment across the entire customer journey lifecycle, right, through multiple signals, and essentially you know help customers fall in love with the companies that they interact with. Um, my role, I've been with the company for close to seven years now. And I've had a variety of roles within professional services. As of now, I'm focused on our partner practice. I help our various partner organizations in helping them build successful medallia practices within their organizations and also in building joint solutions with them. Great. Well, yeah, I'm definitely a fan of medallia. I've had uh, many customers over the years use use various products. So I'm glad to, <laughs> glad awesome. to have you on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's talk about that that critical task of customer experience measurement. It's something that mm-hmm. I feel uh, strongly about, and and it's it's a it's a tough one to crack sometimes. But yeah. Um, yeah. you know, let's talk about some of the challenges and opportunities that arise. Um, so, as we know, customer experience doesn't just occur on a single channel. It happens across many channels, platforms, online, offline, ev- pretty much every which way you can imagine. What what kind of challenges does this create with companies that are trying to measure CX? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question and a great point to start with, right? Um, today's world does include enabling multiple channels or, or signals, as we call them. Um, a common challenge that we see our customers face is that they really have to put together a complex technology stack almost, you know, to, to implement all of these channels, right? You, of course, need your, your CRM solution, your point of sale, ERP, et cetera. But then there's billing, invoicing, e-commerce, social, contact center, digital. It's a, it's a long list, right? So yeah. today's customers interact with companies in a wide variety of ways, right? And they the companies themselves have to constantly evolve or, or they have to stay agile, um, to keep up with these changing channels, right? Years ago, your customer would write you letters. Today, they tweet at you. They talk about you on Facebook. Um, they've even started leaving video reviews, right? So the landscape is constantly changing. So that, I think, is the primary challenge, enabling these channels. Um, once you do that, you also have to ensure you have a consistent experience irrespective of what the channel is, right? If I'm a customer, and I walk into a store and I have a great experience with a retailer, I want that same great experience when I interact with them over the contact center as well, right? If I don't, that will not fly. Um, Once you manage the consistent experience as well, then comes the meaty part, right? Like how do you consolidate all of the data that you're capturing across these different channels and collect all of these signals and data so that the customer interactions and complaints can be analyzed, right? You can draw insights and patterns from that, right? Um, yeah. you, can, you can draw out insights, but sometimes even that is not enough. You have to start operationalizing your customer experience, right? That is where you win. Once you operationalize it, you start connecting with your customers. You predict their issues. You start resolving escalations. All of that becomes an important part, right? And yeah. by the way, like all of this applies to both B2B and B2C organizations, right? Business customers can be as demanding, if not more sometimes than end consumers as well. So it's, it's a wide application range. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think to add another dimension to that as well, so not only 
could a customer be interacting with? I mean, I, I use an example of, you know, a consumer could be walking in a retail store, browsing mm-hmm. on their mobile device for prices, looking, walking yeah. down the aisles of the store and then go home and buy it on Amazon after all of that <laughs> in the, you know, exactly. all that happens. And so they're, you know, they're not only are they concurrently on multiple channels and devices during a stage in the journey, but, you know, now let's take it a step further and say across the entire journey, you also have to piece all those things together as well. Um, yeah. You know, what are what are some of the things that organizations need to keep in mind when attempting to do that as well? It it all I think it all starts with, um, you know, the right design of the actual customer journey itself. Right. It it has to be done from the customer's perspective. That's why um, things like design thinking are such a powerful tool in CX, especially when you're doing the initial journey mapping exercise, right? You step into the shoes of the customer. You have a wide variety of inputs and angles to understand how the customer is feeling um, you know, as they go through the journey. And then you identify those um, moments that matter. You know, These are the moments that ensure that your customer is delighted to interact with your company, with your product versus that of a, of a competitor, right? So once you've designed the actual journey, then you start the defining phase, right? You you identify all the different data sources, formats, cadence. I mean, we could get into a whole discussion around data architecture, but that's right, probably right. a good topic for a different <laughs> uh, different podcast. Um, yeah. This is this is kind of also where you start identifying and creating your customer data objects, right? And having all the right attributes that you might want, you know, to map your journey and also metadata, like to be able to describe the customer uh, themselves. Um, I think the third component, of course, once those initial two steps are done, uh, you've designed the journey, you've defined the data elements, now you start the development, right? You can go down the route of establishing, if you want, a full-scale data lake, right? If your organization is of that size and if you have that kind of budget available. If not, you could very well also use a situa- uh, like a solution like Medallia to consolidate all of your customer experience data from all of your different touch points, no matter what the signals are, um, into Medallia as a one-stop shop. We actually support that for a number of our clients, right? So that's kind of how I would describe it. You you design, you define, and then you like develop. That's, you know, for, for a lot of organizations, connecting the data sources, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an initiative and a project and a multi-year transformation exercise kind of all on its own. But totally, you know, from my perspective, like, that's the beginning, right? That's that's only the start. When that's done, then you can really start doing the work. I know people are in the middle of a, a digital transformation are probably um, <laughs> not not thrilled to hear that, but it's, you know, it, it's true. It's like all this work right. kind of needs to get done in order to really start doing the work. Um, yeah. What, what do you, you know, as you, as you work with companies and partners, you know, what do you recommend to, to companies to keep in mind from the start? Because again, it's not just a matter of connecting, um, you know, connecting wires and data and dots and and stuff like that. Um, You know, what do you recommend that they keep in mind so they can really start that meaningful measurement once, once those pieces are connected? Yeah. I mean, first of all, I I couldn't agree more. The real work does start once everything is set up and, you know, launched, um, I think the key thing to remember is that the world of customer experience is not a technology challenge. It, it in my opinion, is a human challenge, right? It's yeah. not just the journey mapping and the data integrations, like you said, but it's also things like governance, cultural transformation, um, setting up the right metrics and the right targets, and then continuing to be nimble and agile so you can change your approach as your business evolves, right? The whole angle of, of course, employee experience plays a huge role as well, right? Happy employees make happy customers. Um, So one thing that companies can keep in mind right from the beginning is to think of CX as an evolving cultural transformation program, not as an IT implementation project, right? Those two things are very different, right? Um, Our most successful customers are the ones that pay attention to the operationalization of the solution and not just the technical aspects, right? We even have an entire CX advisory team and a strategy analytics team that helps our customers do exactly that. So if there's one thing you want to remember, remember that it's an evolving cultural transformation program. You know, the other the other thing to keep in mind is just, uh, you know, collecting data. Relative, It's relatively easy to collect a lot of data, you know, 
and right. there's data lakes and there's all sorts of ways to do that. But how do you how do you work with an organization to prioritize? You know, it's one thing to have the information; it's another thing to take the time and the effort and um, yeah. the focus to to prioritize and do something about it. So, you know, where where should mm-hmm. an organization start? Um, when they have all this great data, when they have all this, all all that other stuff sort of out of the way, like what, how, how should they think about prioritizing? Right, right. I have all the data. What do I do with it now? Right. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I promise I won't use this as a cop out answer, but, but every client really is, is different, right. Sure, Based on, sure. um, what they currently do, what they've done in the past, um, what exactly they're trying to change and impact, right. All of that contributes to defining where to start. Um, I can run through a few examples. Like we've seen customers pick transactional touch points, for example, that have the largest volume of interactions, right? As a and use that as a starting point. So you know, so that they can maximize the impact. While others might want to start really small and sort of have the approach of let me pilot this and see how it goes, right? Um, some companies want to start with wide relationship programs to try and understand broad CX and brand perspectives. While others might want to start with a big bang, we obviously have clients that start with the whole, I'm going to capture 20 signals across 15 different uh, journey touch points, right? So in reality, it does vary a lot. But the key is to find that approach that works for you and critically for your organization's um, change appetite. I think that's very important, right? You don't want to start so small that there's no change noticeable. And you also don't want to start so large that all of your employees are tired of all the changes that are happening, right? So identify what works for your situation. And then again, be open to expanding and evolving in the future. That's what will make your CX program a huge success. Yeah, I like that. And and one follow up to that is the, the how about the teams that that you've seen that have that have made this successful? Is it, uh, you know, how how many teams across an organization how you know how diverse i guess as far as discipline should mm-hmm. should an organization be thinking when they're when they're planning something like this in our in our most largest complex um clients we've usually seen a mix of a centralized governance model or maybe a, a distributed governance model right you always need to identify an application owner, a solution owner, like someone who is giving that guidance of how this program should evolve. And then you usually want to develop champions between your different regions or business units, people who are necessarily not in customer experience, but are tied to the success of the program. I think having that sort of a split really helps. And then as far as the the measurements themselves, um, I've written a fair amount mm-hmm. about this as well, but you know, there's there's a lot of the kind of go to customer experience measurements, whether it's NPS right. or on the employee side ENPS or CSAT, CES. Mm-hmm. There's you know there's these standards that are that are used, um, and I th- I think despite some limitations, I think they have their place. But you know what what's the downside of of using those either not even necessarily yeah. exclusively, but using those as the primary measurement. Um, with with cx and and you know what what have you seen that's that's worked well it's it's true that we have so many options right we have so many metrics that you can follow and you can you can often get a little lost and you know miss the forest from the trees when when you do something like that um one downside of being over obsessed around metrics is um is score watching right that can be a huge downside um like i said cx is really a cultural transformation project but you have to watch out for your employees and even your leadership um, from becoming score watchers, right? Or target chasers, right? That is not the direction in which you want your culture to transform. Um, You have to remember that um, the metric itself is kind of like the car you're driving. It's not the destination that you want to go to, right? The destination is more things like customer centricity, right? Having a culture of customer delight, and ensuring that you're developing empathy and understanding towards your customers' needs so that you can you can provide them a better experience. Um, how we combat this regularly is we actually apply a number of technologies to understand the qualitative aspects of the experience as well, and not just a quantitative, right? So it's not just the score that your customer or your employee gives you in a survey. It's also analyzing the text that they leave in a comment, right? The tone of their voice, 
when they call into your contact center and you're analyzing their voice recording, right? Even the visual cues that they drop when they submit a feedback through video, we use our technology to analyze these text submissions, audio recordings, and even video playback as well. It's pretty cool stuff. That's great. Yeah, I, I strongly believe that it's it, it takes a lot of different types of metrics to right. to do that. And, and some of those are, you know, what what you're saying the the extra the customer facing, and then there's also the the product side of things too, right? So like, how is a product performing? How are processes being? Um, some of that comes into cultural stuff, like how our process is improved and, and even, um, you know, developed within an organization as well. So definitely it, I, I like that you're, you're thinking that that holistic way there. It's... Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a great point. When you actually end up doing the data analysis, your customer might answer maybe five, 10 questions in a survey. You don't want to give them a 50 question survey. Right. right. Um, but you also want to capture those different operational metrics, right? Uh, was the delivery on time? Was the supply chain healthy? Um, what was the status of the footfall in the retail store? Like those kind of metrics really are the ones that add a lot of color to your overall painting that you're trying to paint in trying to understand how your customer is doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think also the there's there's value in there's value in all of it, right? So, but there's value mm -hmm. in the real time insights that you're able to get that and I think having done a bit in the, in the behavioral side of things as well, like the, the biases that we have, you know, so recency and anchoring and yeah. all the, you know, it's like, we're, we're either biased by the first thing we saw or the last thing we saw or the, you know, right. something, some major momentous thing in, in between, but um, the, those real time insights that are gathered, like on the spot are able to highlight things where, man, we're lucky that they were, the thing they remembered was a good one, but, they had a terrible experience all the way at, you know, towards the beginning of that. So right, um, right. how are, you know, how are you seeing organizations kind of deal with the, the real time versus the, you know, kind of after the fact surveys? I think it completely depends on the extent of the, the maturity of the technology systems, right? That becomes yeah. um, an important component here. So like I said, when you start a customer experience program, there's, obviously the people angle, the actual survey, the customer angle, but also the technology angle. So you have to try and identify opportunities to try and make your data exchanges real time, right? As accurate as possible, hopefully in the same overall data architectural framework so that you're understanding all these different systems because they'll be talking a different language, but you need to like consolidate across all of them. Um, yeah. The airline industry is actually a really good example where airlines are trying to try and get consistent customer experience data across in real time across your entire say flying experience right right from when you um, look for a flight and book one to when you check in you drop your bags you know you board the airplane and then your in-flight experience as well um, like across that entire landscape a lot of airline companies are trying to get more real-time data so that they can um, resolve issues and recover potential, you know, bad customer situations in real time as well. It's a, it's a really exciting space. That's, that's really great because I mean, there's, there's almost nothing like traveling to, you know, it's, it's a high stress, um, time sensitive, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, transaction yeah. and, and all that stuff. So that's, yeah, that's, that's really especially these days, right? Like it, it's become yeah. a lot more sensitive these days as well. Well, um, mm -hmm. one last question before we wrap up here. Um, so just as, doing CX measurement well takes a lot of coordination between platforms. Um, what you do in your uh, joint solution development efforts with your partners takes coordination across teams and their solutions. Can you talk a little bit yeah. about that and, and how it helps your end customers achieve better results? Yeah, I'd love to. This is something I'm, I'm actually really excited about. Um, as part of my current role, I'm leading an effort to try and identify, design, and help build joint solutions with our partners, right? And these partners include the largest consulting firms, systems integrators, there's a bunch of other enterprise-grade software solutions as well, and also boutique advisory firms and market research firms also. Um, so what we basically do in joint solutions is the whole one plus one is equal to three, um, no, we're not bad at math. What that basically <laughs> means is that we identify something that a partner is really good at, right? And then we combine it with our powerful technology 
to create a brand new go to market vehicle that can be custom designed to solve for very complex and specific use cases um when i say we identify something that a partner is good at it could be a methodology that they use it could be an uh, an approach to cx or employee experience or citizen experience that they follow right or um it could also be a complex like tech stack that they're putting together and then we try and identify how medallia can enhance that stack from a technology standpoint right how do we plug in the experience into that overall solution that they're offering to a customer um so the 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 combined power of these ideas from the best consulting research and tech firms in the world with our analytical and signal capturing solutions has uh, created some you know very interesting ideas and it solves so some very interesting problems for our clients i would imagine that also helps with some of the things we were talking about at the very beginning the the connecting the dots and in, in measurement uh, you know sometimes again that's just reconciling data and and integrating systems it takes so much effort and um right. attention so i would is that is that one of the you know one of the one of the big benefits out of this as well absolutely a, a big component of these joint solutions is incorporating our um you know technology partners like our isvs to be able to create solutions that can be easily replicable right so if i have a standalone cx medallia solution um but implementing that over an sap system is so different from a salesforce system but if i can create a solution that i can easily replicate it's almost like building an app right on the medallia platform that you can then replicate and install for all of my customers that are using x back end systems and so it standardizes the process of that implementation it increases your time to value because you accelerate your value realization and it also actually makes it a lot safer especially when you standardize these technology integrations um data security data cleanliness all of those things are incorporated in the design so you don't you don't fall out of line or fall out of your lane too much when dealing with sensitive customer data as well well uh thanks so much for joining the show um for those listening what's the best way for them to keep up with what you're doing I I would I would say LinkedIn is probably the best way well I mean sadly I don't have a podcast of my own not yet <laughs> so you know feel free to look me up on LinkedIn I'd love to connect um chat more and exchange ideas Well again I'd like to thank Dushan uh, Mitra for a uh, director of uh, professional services partner experience and practice success at Medallia for joining the show uh thanks again for listening to the Agile World with Greg Kilstrom see you next week Thanks again for listening to the Agile World podcast brought to you by Tech Systems I'm your host Greg Kilstrom If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can learn more and get a copy of my latest book, The Agile Workforce, from my website at theagile.world.